Okay, what is up YouTube? Brandon here back with another video and in this video we're going to be reviewing the Sony Cybershot DSC WX50. Now this is a very awesome point and shoot and I've had it about a month so I'm going to show you all some pictures and video tests further down into the video. So you can see here on the front you have your flash, some Sony logos and it does say 16.2 megapixels as well as some chrome accents around the lens. On the top you will see your two stereo microphones You'll see your on and off button and you see the little clear part on there that is a LED indicator. You have your zoom toggle and then over here on the right side you do have a mini HDMI out so you can output the 1080p at 60i, not 60p but 60i to your TV. Uh, flipping it around to the bottom uh, you will see that you do have your battery door and things like that and on the back you do have your scroll wheel. And also on the bottom, you do have the charging port, and that's what you're going to charge it. However, I do use an external battery charger, and you do have a little tripod thread, so you can hook it up to any standard tripod. Now, as far as the features go on this thing, uh, we will just go ahead and take a look at them. Now, this thing really does have a lot of features for anyone who likes to take cool Instagram-type photos or some pretty nice-looking video. So you can see I just used the 5x optical zoom. Now it's not the longest, but it will get you pretty close to whatever you need to get to. And by turning the little scroll wheel, that will bring up all of your different modes. And this thing has a bunch of different cool modes that is good for the average teen. Uh, maybe not more of a professional um, photographer, but definitely for an average teen. If you go into the scene selection, you can see all of your different scenes. You have things such as night poetry, so if you're going to be taking stuff out, side at night you also do have some settings for like sunny if you're going to be at the beach now the picture effects are probably the best picture uh, editing software that is built into this camera I like the toy camera and you will see some sample video shot with the toy camera and some pictures but I really do like it it kind of makes it look like a cinematic look and I really have enjoyed using that feature now moving down to background defocus that kind of makes it seem like a DSLR. It does add a pretty nice depth of field. You also see some sample pictures on that as well. And that's a pretty cool feature if you're going to be taking some macro shots up close to uh, flowers or things of that nature. And also you do have Intelligent Auto and that's just going to set everything for you. And you have Intelligent Auto Plus which is going to take a couple of different pictures and combine them all together to give you the best shot. Now deleting the pictures is very easy with the scroll wheel as you can scroll through all of your pictures very very fast and I really like this better than the little four way d-pad type button layout. Now in the menu you have a bunch of different settings you can go and change your image size from 16 megapixels to 10 megapixels to 5 megapixels but I do keep it at 16 megapixels. Also you do have some of these settings for your picture uh, settings you also do have some adjust brightness so you can change the brightness up and down. You also do have the continuous shooting interval and this allows you to take up to 10 frames per second. So say you want to jump off of a trampoline, uh, just hold down the shutter button and it will take a bunch of photos really really fast. You also do have your recording quality and I keep mine set at 1920 by 1080 however you can decrease the quality if you do not want such a big file size. And you also do have some settings for your stabilization. Now also like I was talking about the continuous shooting setting where you can just hold down the shutter button and take 10 frames per second. I'll go ahead and demo that right now and I really have enjoyed using this for action shots. You can see how when I move it, uh, it took those 10 pictures very 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 fast and that's pretty cool that you don't see on a lot of lower end cameras that's usually up in the DSLR range. Now you can also change the display on the screen. You can have it show more information. Um, the information that I have now, which is not too much, just the basic stuff like the battery, or you can have it to where it won't show any information. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the video on this camera. Now the first little bit of video I'm going to be showing y'all is with the camera set to where it only records green colors. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so now that we are outside for the video test, uh, we're just going to go ahead and test out some of the 1080p HD quality. And the quality on this thing 
on the screen looks a little bit better than it does on the computer which can be expected with any camera or smartphone out there we're just going to walk over here and get up close to some things and it has a couple different shooting modes uh, and i'll show you them too i like the toy camera effect that kind of gives it a old uh, rustic look so let's get up close to the mailbox And let y'all see how it focuses in. Now let's just go ahead and test out the 5 by optical zoom. We're going to zoom in on this old shed over here. So that's how far the zoom is going to get you in. It's definitely not going to zoom in very far at all. But that is to be expected of a point and shoot camera. So we will just walk over here to this field and get up close to some of these plants that are out here. And test them out. And this is using the onboard microphones. They are stereo. And they are on top of the camera. And this is the automatic settings that I have it on right now. So let's just go ahead and test out the toy camera effect. That is my favorite. So let's go ahead and try it out. Okay, so here is the toy camera effect. It really does make the video, in my opinion, look a whole lot better. And you can see how it kind of darkens the edges and kind of makes it look like a pinhole. I just really like this look. It does look very good when shooting outside. We just pan around real quick. It just gives it sort of a older look, uh, like some vintage video. So next, let's just go ahead and test out the video mode where it will only capture a certain color. You can set it to red, blue, or green. So let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, so now I have it set to where it will only record green. And we will just record this car coming by and you can see how everything else is black and white. And the nice green grass and the field is green. And this also does give a pretty cool effect if you're going to be outside shooting uh, nature, the trees and things. And you can also set it to pick up red, but there's not really much red out here, so I didn't choose that option. So I think this mode is pretty cool as well. Uh, it adds a different look, and I really like all these features that are built in to the video. And this does also work with the camera. Okay, so the per first picture that we are looking at here is shot with watercolor, and this is actually tree bark, and I think that that looks pretty good. This picture right here is just shot using just auto uh, settings, and this one right here is the same. I'm kind of in a shaded area, so we can test out how it adjusts to light. And right here, you can see it does have the sky and the grass and everything in focus, and with some other cameras, you just don't get that. Now this is using the background defocus and you can see how amazing it looks. And you can see how it just blurs out the background while keeping the uh, main frame. Here I'm just holding up my hand so you could uh, just see what it looks like. And here is background defocused again. And it looks very professional quality. And here is a macro shot without using any background defocus. And here it is with background defocus. Now this picture coming up right here, uh, you can see it's just on automatic settings, but however it does have a depth of field, and that is something that I really do like. And here I just took a picture indoors of the Roku 3 on automatic settings as well. And I took a picture of my router at nighttime with the flash, and it did illuminate it pretty well. 
And here's just some macro shots of some little die cast cars. And these turned out to be very amazing. So definitely for a point and shoot, you cannot beat the image quality. I used the flash on here, so that is why it has some of a glare. But here it is without the flash. And just the macro mode on this thing is amazing for $100. You just can't beat it. And then here's just a picture of a guitar with the sunlight shining through the window. So you can see how that turned out. Now this is using the awesome uh, photo editing software that's built in. Uh, that one is the HDR painting. I think that looks pretty awesome. Uh, black and white, I don't really like that because that kind of makes me think back to the 50s. And the miniature just keeps a little bit of the photo in focus and it does have some little bars so you can line that up. That looks pretty awesome as well. Now here's one of my favorites. This is the toy camera. You can see how it darkens out the edges of the video. And pop color just brings a little bit more vibrancy to the photo. And this is partial color. You can set it to pick up green, blue, or red, or yellow. And I set it to pick up green, so that's why only some of the picture is green while the rest is black and white. Now this one right here is watercolor. I think this looks pretty cool as well. And depending on the environment, it will turn out a little bit better. But I tried to take all of these pictures in the same place so you could just get a feel of what it all looks like. So let's just go ahead and give you my final thoughts. Overall, I think this camera is amazing for the price. Definitely go check it out with the links down below. And that's about it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps out a lot. If you have any questions about this camera, just leave them down below. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow me on Twitter. So I hope you guys will stay tuned to the next video. And until then, have a great day.